Hey everyone, welcome back to Workshop Quick Takes. Previously on this vehicle, I replaced the original seal beam headlines with these H4 replacements. These are an open beam type that uses a replaceable H4 lamp behind it. The main advantage of that is that with these clear lenses, I can get a lot better light distribution compared to the original seal beam lamp, but I've been kind of yearning for more light output overall and finally decided with a Christmas bonus that I was going to go ahead and put in a decent quality set of LED replacements. These are truck light units. They are not generic lookalikes. These I ordered online. They're about the most affordable of the available higher end LED fixtures, and I like the fairly simple clean look of them. So those are going in, but before we uh, take these out, let's go inside real quick, look at them on the workbench and see what makes them worth the price. You might be looking at these thinking, oh, those are nothing special. I've seen these for 80 bucks a pair on eBay all day long. Um, well, you haven't. What you've seen are the Chinese knockoffs of the original truck light design. Truck light was one of the earliest into the market for high-end LED seal beam replacement lamp. So these here are an easily copied design physically. But let's take a look inside and see what makes them worthwhile because these are considerably more expensive. Comes with dielectric grease for the terminals, that's nice. Always interesting to see what the manufacturers come up with in place of styrofoam these days. Okay, so here's one unit. Um, it says truck light right on there. It says dot SEEHL11, even has the alignment nubs. And then we have our connector here. Instead of having the this directly on the back so that your uh, factory connector comes into it, it has this little pigtail, which is nice. And these are even labeled. White wire is ground. Green is low beam. Red is high beam. So the way these are constructed, is they're actually divided sort of down the middle. The top half uh, fires the low beam, the bottom half fires the high beam. Let's get one of these up close to the top camera here and see if we can uh, see the reflection clearly. Well, kind of. You see right there in the middle where the reflector there, that little yellow spot? That's actually the chip down in there for the low beam. It's kind of tucked back there behind that little uh, shield. But the high beam's a little easier to see from the outside. That chip is that little uh, kind of bright device right down there. Turn it at the right angle and you can kind of see a little white and yellow on it. And then this whole thing here is the driver's circuit board. And that circuit board appears to be of extremely high quality. I notice it even has a conformal coating on it. And then this whole centerpiece is a giant aluminum heat sink that I think ties into the main body for heat dissipation. So, nice looking design. Let's fire it up on the bench here and see how it works. I've got here the 13.8 volt power supply. I have here some leads, and I've gotten, given myself one positive and two negative, and what I'm going to do is the negative on this one is in fact the ground, which is again confirming white wire, which comes out to this terminal here, and I'm going to run negative back through this meter on the ammeter setting. Now the way you get an ammeter setting is first of all, you have to move one of these leads, either you're using the milliamp scale or you're using the amp scale. I'm expecting this to be in the amps range, so I'm going to set it down here to 20 amps. Something important to remember when using ammeter mode is there is now effectively a short circuit through here. So now I'm going to come out the other lead. Now that I've got my ammeter measurement set up and plug that into negative on the power supply. For positive, I'm going to go ahead and keep it in my hand and then switch between low beam and high beam to show how this works. Low beam. That's the top one coming on, quite bright. High beam turns on both. So now the low end, bottom and the top ones are on. And that is extremely bright. Something nice about this name brand unit is the light coming out of here has a very good beam pattern. I think Headlight Revolution did a shootout on this style of sealed beam replacement and the truck light was one of, of only about four that actually passed. So it's got a really nice beam pattern coming out. It's extremely bright in the hot spot. For the most part, I'm getting a fairly clean, flat white output and that's exactly what you want from a good LED headlamp. Now it's getting about 1.11 amps at 13.8 volts for the low beam and just about two amps for the high beam. Looking here, it says that at 12.8 volts, it should be pulling about 1.28 amps on the low beam and 2.06 on the high beam. So we're definitely in the right range there. Another reason why I picked the truck light ones in particular is, I mean, they have kind of a black chrome blackout look to them, which is interesting, but they're also one of the ones that looks closest to an OE headlamp. Doesn't, you know, not covered with little bubbles and LED pods and whatever else that screams, hey, look at this thing here. It's kind of weird and maybe expensive. So hopefully these will get a long life out of them. The only thing that seems just slightly cheap is this plastic cover. That could be a little thicker, and that's definitely not as thick as OEM headlight covers from what I can tell. Second one, same setup. Got our dielectric grease, that's nice. Have our lamp fixture. Let's go ahead and take a quick look when we uh, tap low beam. That's working fine, yeah, 1.12, 1.13 amps, and high beam, 2.05, so yeah. That's right in line with what was measured on the other one. They both seem to be working okay. Next thing is just to install them and see if they work properly after they have a chance to warm up in real world conditions. 
All right, now that we've had a look at those indoors, before pulling these out, I want to do something and that's turn them on and mark the limits of the beam pattern on the fence over here. So when I get the new ones in, if I have to make an emergency drive away later, before I have time to align them properly, at least I won't be blinding people. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this white duct tape and I'm gonna mark kind of an X. Again, we're parked on a slight slope, so I'm not expecting this to be perfect. But it looks to me like the main distribution of the beam hotspot is right in there, or the horizontal plane. And the center of the hotspot is roughly right there. When I put in the replacements, I want to get them adjusted until they roughly line up with that, and that'll be a good starting point. There we go. I've shown how to take these out on a previous video, so it's just pretty straightforward. Got two screws inside the fascia there. And I want to make sure I collect both of them so they don't end up in a tire later. Got them. In order to properly get at these two lower screws that are supporting the headlight, I'm going to want to pull the uh, parking lap assembly out. Okay, before we proceed to removing these four, let's go ahead and do the same on the other side. Capture both screws, got the fascia. Okay, now for the step where we actually remove the fixture I previously replaced. That's these four screws right here. And note, now that we're down in here, we have an alignment screw there and an alignment screw there that will need to be adjusted later. There's our original plug, and there's our original fixture, and there's the H4 replaceable bulb that's inside it. These are great little fixtures. They're all glass and ceramic. Got no complaints about them. Just decided I want higher light output and one trade-off I'm about to make is since these have a halogen bulb in them, they will melt snow off face. LED headlamps commonly have a problem with not doing that unless you get ones that have an integrated wire that can heat the lamp. But those cost a lot of money and I'm not in a climate where I get snow and ice build up on my front of my headlamps more than two or three times a year, so I'm usually good. Also, I do need to pop this off here somehow. It's going to be a little stuck on there, but it is reusable. Note the uh, two wider spaced ones go on the bottom, the two narrower spaced ones go on the top. Go ahead and remove one of those. And in order to preserve this one from damage until I decide what to do with them, probably sell them. Then just go ahead and put them in the box. Okay, same deal over here. Now I've got these four screws to remove. Once again, save the ring. Two wide ones on the bottom, two narrower ones on the top. Before proceeding further with this, however, I really should have just wrapped this little harness. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Just take a strip of a Scotch Super 33 electrical tape, nice and flexible, good temp working range for temperatures. I'm gonna set this down somewhere where I'm not gonna scratch up the face before I even get to use it. And then just do a quick wrap of this wire harness here so that if it starts rubbing on things back in there where it's tucked back, it hopefully won't just cut through and short. Take a piece of this split loom, just a short section and put that on top. It's easy to be tempted to skip this step, especially if you don't already have the supplies on hand. Why would I go and buy those just for such a little job? But protecting wiring is one of the best possible ways to ensure a reliable vehicle and avoid fires. Next step is gonna be this dielectric grease that they conveniently provided for me. It looks like I actually have a little tear tab there, but I never trust those. So let's just cut that off to make sure I get a nice even break there. Okay, what I'm gonna do with the dielectric grease here is just apply a little bit to each terminal. This helps protect the metal terminals here from corrosion getting in. I now need to put this, note that it says top, because otherwise the low beam section is going to be firing wrong. Just carefully put this around it, and that fits nice and clean. So now that's going to plug into there, just like that. And now the excess wiring has to tuck back in behind there. And so you can kind of see why I thought it was a good idea just to pr protect it a little better. Go ahead and start one of these screws by hand, just to make sure that it's going in where it needs to. Do the same thing on an opposite corner so I know it won't fall out. That one's tight. It's in there nice and firm, doesn't move around. That's what we want because otherwise ch changing the adjusting screws won't buy much for us. It'll just come out of alignment again. Before we change the other one over there, let's just take a quick look at what the beam pattern looks like on the fence now, comparing the two lights side by side. All right, y'all ready for this? 
You can see there's a much wider path of light being put out by that, but it still follows that kind of cross with a hot spot in the center like it's supposed to. This one here, we've got white light going from here to here at least, so that's gonna be a much better spread on the highway. But we still have kind of a hot area right here and a hot spot right here. It's riding a little high at the moment, so I'm gonna need to bring that down because I don't want this shining line clear up here. I want this line here. But overall, that's gonna put a whole lot more light forward and result in a lot better visibility compared to the halogen, which with the H4 aftermarket replacement isn't doing all that bad, but I mean, there's just more of a little orange oval here. They gave me so much dielectric grease in the first one, I'm not gonna open this. I'll save this for a future project. Just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap the harness here a little bit to protect it from chafing. Once again, we need to get dielectric grease on these connections. Carefully put that over it. So I plug the harness back in. Tuck the extra wire behind the uh, fixture. But just like before, let's turn on the lights first and see what happens. Oh man, is that pretty. Here's the really spectacular part now. Notice we've got a continuous beam of light that starts about here-ish, somewhere in here, and continues all the way across to here-ish. That's what you want to see for good nighttime visibility, and there's not a pair of halogens made that can quite do that. So these here should be great. Now at this point, I could go ahead and reinstall the parking lamps because the adjustment screws are on the top and on the sides, but I think life will be a little bit easier if I just leave them out for now. Okay, so I think this is about the best possible look at the adjustment screws. There's one right there, and a second one right there. And they should follow lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, meaning as I loosen this one, it's going to rotate the beam down. And as I loosen this one and pull and come out on this side, it should rotate the beam left. And then, of course, in will rotate the beam up, and down will rotate the beam right. Here on the right-hand side, it's still the same thing. This one here, top and bottom, will do the same thing. But since this one stays on the inside, out rotates this beam that way and in rotates it back that way. There's a bit of rust on those, so I should probably get some WD-40 or penetrating oil and just very slightly spritz those before trying to mess with them. Okay, I'm gonna go with the original formula WD-40 for this one. The fact that it dries out faster and doesn't leave a lot of oil to drip down later is kind of a plus in this location. That should be pretty close. Second to last step is gonna be getting the parking light fixtures put back in. Again, if you can't hear it, I do have this clutch way down because I don't wanna strip out a bunch of plastic pieces. That'll work. Okay, one more check of the lights before we put the decorative fashions back on. All right, looks like we're good. Check the high beam. It's good. Okay, get lefty over here on. And then righty over here. All right, there we go. That is some nice bright light output. Just need to clean those back off because I got some grease on them, I think. But other than that, we should be good and we should have much better light going down the road. So can't wait to do a test drive at night and see what it looks like. I had to wait till after dark and in order to figure out the proper aiming because I really didn't have it right first off. But now that I've got it squared away, let's take a look at what it's doing because this beam pattern is just fantastic and shows the value of purchasing the higher end LED headlights rather than the cheap ones off of eBay. Okay, there's the pixel foam with the exposure dial way down. So there's the uh, hot spot for the left high, uh, low beam over there, along with the furthest extent of our beam pattern. And although it's being washed out a bit over this direction by the uh, car part light, we've got basically the same pattern ending up over there, along with our right low beam hot spot. 
and that is just an incredible pattern. Took it out on the road and it illuminates the road perfectly, so it doesn't get much better than that. And you certainly can't do that with any set of halogens. There's what it looks with the high beams on. We still have our hot spots in roughly the same places. But now note that there's a little bit of additional scatter above the hot spot left and right. But the low beam cutoff line is still dominating. So we will get extra light cast down the road, which is great. And our low beam still fills in the area that it was before, which is also great. Hopefully with the help of this, that's enough reason to convince you why LED headlights are not something to simply be slapped on at the lowest possible price. You want to actually see what's down the road? You need to get a good pair, and yeah, it will cost you a little money, but hopefully it's worth it, both in beam pattern and, remains to be seen, longevity. Well, the headlights have been installed for about a year now, so let's see how they're actually doing for longevity. Looking up close, they've actually stayed pretty clean. Now granted, this vehicle, even though it is equipped to be a daily driver, doesn't actually get used all that much. So there's only maybe, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 miles on here in the past year, most of that just being outdoor 4x4 stuff. In any case though, there's a few small chips and nicks, but there's no cracks in the plastic. It's not starting to yellow right away or anything like that. So it seems like it's in pretty good shape overall. Same thing over here for the driver's side unit. Our beam pattern is still looking great. Looking at the low beam there, we can see that everything is nice and bright there. Still working over here as well. High beams, more light cast down road. All that's still working great too. In fact, the only difference since recording all the original video work is that this light here is now fully working. I had to do some rewiring to get that back in shape. It has a corroded connection the last time you saw it on this video. So yeah, that's where it stands. No reason not to recommend them. They seem to be working great and I'm very pleased with the performance. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again on that episode of Workshop Quick Takes. Hopefully you found that inspirational. Maybe you want to get out there and improve the lighting on your vehicle. Go do it. It's a huge help at night. Now, one thing we didn't cover in the body of this past video, but hopefully you got impressed by it either watching our previous H4 halogen upgrade or watching this one, and that is how incredibly easy it is to walk up to this vehicle and remove the headlights. If you're going to take our advice and put a decent quality of reasonably expensive, unfortunately, LED headlights in your vehicle, you probably don't want to leave them in a state where just anybody can walk up with a number P2 Phillips or something of a similar size and walk off with them again. So think about some ways that might work for you to make the vehicle a little more secure, maybe using some different head screws or something in there just to slow down somebody who's thinking that they're just going to get at it. Or you could even put some S brackets over that um, come over the edge of the headlight and then go through and have a quarter 20 bolt with a quarter 20 nylon colored lock nut on the back side. That'll never come off unless somebody gets on the back side and actually holds it with a pair of pliers. It'll just spin. So there's some options like that. If your vehicle is in any danger at all of being a target of theft, you might want to think about that before doing this upgrade. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?